in Leviticus chapter 26, 2 through 11. And let's talk about a few things. Now, if you remember your Bible story <clears throat> where Moses delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, but not just out of Egypt, but out of the bondage, say bondage, bondage of Egypt. Then Moses, if you understand the Pentateuch, Moses is the one that wrote the Pentateuch, and now he has a bunch of people on his hands <laughs> that he's trying to shape into a contemporary understanding of themselves because they have been slaves. Having spent 400 years as slaves, they are not certain of how to be free now that he's brought them out because when you've been bound a long time bound becomes normal when you've been bound a long time it becomes normal but when you've been abused a long time that becomes normal when you have been depressed a long time depressed becomes normal and freedom then becomes work so Moses is now teaching them because they have now transitioned from being up under Pharaoh's thumb. They watched him being drowned in the Red Sea. And they've gone from being slaves to sons to become a nation. They've received the commandments of God. And they're trying to begin to understand how to observe them so that they can be all that God has called them to be. And Moses then says to them out of Leviticus chapter 26, observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary, for I am the Lord. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in its season. Hear that? I will send you rain in its season and the ground will yield its crops and the trees their fruit. Your threshing will continue until the grape harvest, and the grape harvest will continue until planting, and you will eat all the food you want and live in safety in your land. I will grant peace in the land, and you will lie down, and no one will make you afraid. I will remove wild beasts from the land, and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies and they will fall by the sword before you. Five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall chase 10,000 and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will look on you with favor. Did you hear that? I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers and I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out of the way and make room for the new. I will put my dwelling place among you and I will not abhor or tax you. I'm going to talk to you from the subject this morning, the unseen side of better. The unseen side of better. We look at the face of that scripture and, um, um, that I'm talking about, and, and it's the face we look on. But I'm going to talk to you what you may not have noticed when you read the text along with me in that particular text that I'm calling the unseen uh, side of better. Did you know that better has an unseen side? True. True. Better has an unseen side. Everything has an unseen side. <laughs> Everything, all restaurants have an unseen side. You've been going to the same restaurant, whether it's Red Lobster or, or Papa Do's or whichever one you've been going to. You've been going there for a number of years and you've only seen the face of the restaurant. If you want to see the unseen side of the restaurant, you got to go in the kitchen. The kitchen is where it's happening. The kitchen is the place they get inspected. Are you hearing me? So, 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 so you stay in, when you go to your favorite hotel, you stay in the face of the hotel. <laughs> but if you want to see the unseen side, go to that behind that door that says employees only. Everything 
has an unseen side. Every promise of God has an unseen side. Every gift from God has an unseen side, has a responsibility, has a requirement. And we're going to talk about it this morning because we're going to better. Anybody here with me going to better? Hear me. God got so far for you to go. If you just let him think through you and work through you. He's got so far for you to go. He said, your thoughts are not, have not been my thoughts. And he says, your ways have not been my ways. So from this day, we're going to open up and we're going to allow God to think through our mind and work through our hands. We're going to receive what he has and what he says for us and what he says about us. Watch this, how far we can go, what we can have what we can do, what we can own. Come on, saints, y'all work with me here. Maybe it's just 12 of us in this room. Maybe it's just 12 of us in this room that's going to better. I, 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 I don't know, maybe it's just 12 of us that's going to better. I, I, I didn't have another year to stay in the same level that I was last year. And I, I sure didn't go through everything I went through last year to go backwards. Mm -mm, I'm going to better. I am going to better. Who's going to better with me? Tell your neighbor, say, I'm going to better. Come on, don't be ashamed. And tell them I'm going to better. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, fall afresh upon us as we share the word of God. Let it be strength to us. Let it be nourishment. Let it empower us. Motivate us to become all that you would have us to be. We thank you for the unseen side. The back side are better. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I saw y'all getting anxious, trying to, give me, trying to give me signals. But I might as well punish y'all because they didn't bring my stool out here today. So since I'm standing, I want everybody else to feel what I had to feel. Say amen, somebody. Uh, I want to let you know from the outset that this is not a one-size-fits-all message. You're going to have to scale this message down to your life and to your life story. You got to understand that better for one person is totally different from better for another person question, do you know what better is for you? It depends on what you value. How you define better. Hmm. And what's the purpose of God in your life and for your life? To the Hebrews, it is the better to be better agriculturally, to have food to eat, to have sustenance, to be sustained. But there's a lot of different kinds of betters depending on what you're going through and what you've been through. These are people who have proven that they have great work ethic. They have been slaves for over 400 years. They have built Egypt. They had worked and proven that they were skilled artisans, not just laborers. They were gifted. They were talented. They were builders. They were gifted to build and to sustain and to grow. And they were gifted agriculturally. They had always been good at building something for somebody else. But the question becomes, in 2023, some of us that are really good at building for other people really suck for building for ourselves. Listen, we're really good at doing things for other people, but when it comes down to doing things for ourselves, sometimes it becomes challenging. We procrastinate. We put it off. We don't fulfill our own vision, our own dream. We don't work to the degree that we ought to work to see the accomplish what ought to be accomplished in our life. And most of the time, we don't do it because we think it's just going to happen for us. That it's just going to happen. But can I tell you this morning, it's not just going to happen. Scripture says, show me your faith and I'll show you by your works. Reading the text head on, it feels like uh, it's just going to happen. God's 
going to do it and it's just going to happen. But listen to me, there are certain things that God's going to do, but there are certain things that you have to do. Remember some time ago I talked to you about that uh, atmospheres create climates and climates create strongholds over a region. Strongholds create a culture and belief behavior and belief systems. So what the challenge is with bringing people out of anything, out of poverty, out of abuse, out of a routine, out of silence, out of normal, out of rituals, out of generational curses, the challenge is to break the culture and own the territory. Are y'all hearing me? The challenge is to break the culture of what has been built up around where you came from. And, and, and so when you read the text, Moses has a big job. It's not just writing down what God says and, and, and coming down and telling the people. His job was to add value to others' lives. The hardest thing about learning and leading a group of people is to convince them that they can do better. He has to create a new normal for them. They have been up under a monarchy and they are now up under a theocracy. So everything has to start over. They have been serving the Egyptians so long that when they got ready to build a picture of what they thought God was, they built the Egyptians God. Association brings about assimilation. And once you've been around a certain kind of people long enough, you start adopting things about them that you didn't even intend to adopt. That's why you need to be careful who you hang around. You got to be very particular now who you hang around. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They will distort your image of God, and they will distort your image of yourself. And now Moses is trying to take them through, the, through detox and establish a theocracy because education teaches you what you think but not how, how to think. So Moses does it in three different ways. He gives them the Ten Commandments. He gives them the judgments. And he gives them the sacraments. The commandments are the constitution. Because now they have become a new nation. They have become a new nationality, a new nationality in the earth. Uh, but they don't know how to be a nation because they have been a slave. Because free feels funny when you've been bound. So the Ten Commandments become the Constitution. It becomes a creed that they go to, but, 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 but they couldn't stop with the commandments because the commandments deal with thou shalt not and sets up a rule of thumb uh, that sets them apart from their, uh, with distinction and, and deals with, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That's, that's what set them apart from other nations. The Sabbath was a part of the expression of the covenant that they loved God and they had a God. And, and that's why you saw the earth and the early, that early in the text. Then he said the judgments deal with how you treat each other. So when you read the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy as well, you would hear a lot of things like if your brother takes your goat. Or if you look on your neighbor's wife, it's dealing with how they interact uh, with each other. <laughs> because when you are redoing how you respond to life from a cultural perspective, it is possible to be out physically, but not out mentally. Just because you have a degree doesn't make you not ghetto. <laughs> now, y'all know. Don't sit there and look cute. And act like, listen, you can go to school and have more degrees than a thermometer. And we can make you mad. And you go right into hood rat. <laughs> you go into what you came from because you have not been fully delivered mentally from where you came from. And somebody sets you off and you react to things and that's what makes marriage sometimes difficult. Because sometimes what sets your spouse off your spouse has nothing to do with you. Has something to do with somebody who came before you. And you strike a nerve and your spouse is not talking to you, but talking uh, like, but he's talking to the one that came before you. 
and you don't even know what you're fighting about. I mean, you're just going back and forth, and you're trying to fight back because the newness hasn't been adapted to in the cultural sense. So God gives, begins to give them judgments to control how they deal with one another. And then sacraments to teach them how to worship. Because praise and worship is the avenue into the presence of God. You must be taught how to worship. We are born with an instinct to worship, but we must be taught how to worship because worship is not about how you feel. It's about what God wants. Are you hearing me? So I don't clap because I feel like clapping. I clap because the Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Uh, but pastor, I'm not normally a loud person. I didn't ask you what you are normally. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I'm not just doing that to do that. Shouting does something in the spirit. Shouting breaks something in the spirit. Shouting releases something in the spirit. And for the demonic warfare that you have to fight in 2023, you can't afford to be trim and proper. <laughs> Sometimes you have to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. You have to shout unto God with a voice of triumph when you feel de when you feel defeated. I didn't ask how you feel. You might feel defeated. You might have just been defeated. God said, "Shout unto God with the voice of triumph." Call those things that are not as though they were. God says, I want you to start walking around like you got the victory. Stand on your feet right now. Walk around like you got the victory. Come on, begin to walk around like you, even when you don't feel like you got the victory. Because when God shows up, everybody and everything else has to shut up and be dismissed. Come on, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. <coughs> you can have your seats. At the beginning, the very beginning of our text, he starts talking about the sacred. Observe my Sabbaths and have reference for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. He starts dealing with the sacred. He's going up dealing with, uh, he's going to end up dealing with vegetation and crops and everything else. But he says, before I can bless you, you must obey. See, the church today wants the blessing, but we don't want the obedience. We don't want to honor God's house, or God's word, or God's way. We don't want to live the way God said live. We want to shack up when we want to shack up. We don't want to live the way God says live. We just want what God says we can have. So as long as you're preaching about the promises of God, we're ready to shout the place down. But when you start talking about requirements, then we get quiet and feel led to go to another church. <laughs> because we don't want to do what it takes to be eligible to walk in the blessings and the promises of God. Uh, I'm being open with you. Something is going to be required of you for you to walk into what God has for you to receive. You're not, just, you're not just arbitrarily going to be blessed just because you want to be blessed. God is not Santa Claus. He's not a genie in the bottle. Are you hearing me? And, and so he says, I'm checking out how you treat me. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor my sanctuary. This is a sanctuary. What we're building on Morgan Road is a sanctuary. It's not an auditorium. It's a sanctuary. So don't bring no chicken bones up in here. You don't eat up in here. You don't drink up in here. You don't fool around up in here. Oftentimes, it's not a intermission. This is a sanctuary. This is a sanctuary. This is not a Prince or a Mary J concert. This is a sanctuary. Come on, there, there must be order in God's house. 
Listen carefully. See, we don't have any of the old mothers anymore, like Pastor Regina used to talk about. Uh, that say, I'm supposed to be able to just preach and I have to deal with other stuff. The old mothers would tell you, to, you know, they take care of it. Sit your behind down. There, there, there's a certain thing God gets out of you reverencing. This is the house of the Lord. He said, honor my sanctuary. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He wants you to understand that some things are sacred. You need to know that, that some things are sacred. We're living in a society right now, today, that nothing is sacred. Everything is so familiar that we have no respect for authority, no respect for order, for discipline, or anything else. Nothing is sacred anymore, and that is what's damaging to us. There are some things that ought to be sacred. I'm going to sound a little old-fashioned, a little old-fashioned, but, you know, I'm 75 years old, so I can have certain liberties. I can, I can, I can say certain things. Mm-hmm. And I'll be on my next point in a few minutes. I'll be on my next point in just, just a few minutes. But I don't think you ought to call your mama by a name. Mm-hmm. See, 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 if she raised you and she's a good mother and she honors you, I don't think you ought to come off the street and call her, hey, Lucy. I, I don't think my kids ought to be running up to me talking about, what's up, CL? <laughs> Not with a full set of teeth. <laughs> Maybe a lot of gum, but we know we're going to be. Some things are sacred. That's not because I'm dictatorial, but that's because I'm a covering in your life. And if you bring me down and make me common, I can't cover you. Bringing other people down don't bring you up. You need to have some things that are sacred in your life. Let the church say amen. And Augusta folk have not been taught to honor anything. We don't honor anything. We don't honor anybody. We don't respect anything. We don't respect anybody. Everybody does their own thing. I don't feel like it. I don't want to do it. I, I, I don't have to do it. I, I'll come when I get ready and I'll leave when I get ready. Sit your down. Don't make me come over there. You need to understand some things are sacred. And God establishes order. Parents, you are not doing your children any favor, buddy buddying up to them. You can get a friend anywhere. You got one time to have a mama. You have one time to have a daddy. Get yourself in line. You're going to respect me today. Aren't you glad I didn't raise you? You're going to learn today. Let the church say amen. amen. And, 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 and then he says, I will send rain in its season. So, so I want to talk about seasons. I will send you rain in the seasons. I won't send you rain when you want it. I won't send you rain when you think you need it. I will send rain in its, in its season. There's a season for rain. There's a season for dryness. There's a season for drought. There's a reason it hasn't rained yet. It's not time yet. If it hadn't rained yet, it's not time yet. You don't want continual rain. I will send you rain in its season. Why, why, why do you want rain all the time? Because if you, don't want, if you don't plant before the rain, then all you'll get when it rains is wet. Now, the text doesn't say anything about planting. It doesn't say anywhere we read about planting. It just talks about rain. But the unseen side of the text requires that you understand that when I send the rain, you've got to already be ready for it. It, 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 it. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but God's getting ready to send you some rain. He, 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 he's getting ready. To send you some rain, you don't have to worry about rain. You don't have to worry about what you got to worry about is ready. You don't have to worry about the rain. You got to worry about is ready. Are you ready for the rain? 
Because there's no doubt about whether I will send the rain. I will send the rain. The doubt is, will you be ready? Because if you have not plowed, if you have not planted before I send the rain, then all you're going to get is just wet. The rain only blesses what you already did. Talk back to me. Some Stop expecting God to do your planting. God is not going to plant for you. You have to plant your own seeds. Listen, when Pastor Regina and I got ready, uh, get ready to plan an event, <coughs> we looked at the availability, the rates, the fees, and I'm talking about for 2024. And we do that this year. Are you hearing me? All we have left to do in 2024 20, is the harvest what we planted in 2023. So when 2024 gets here, we're planting for 2025. Because if we don't do that, we will diminish our ability to receive harvest if we are not ready for the harvest. Come on, stay with me. Say, get ready for the rain. Am I ready for the rain? You get ready for the rain. Tell somebody else, get ready for the rain. Which brings me to my third point. Have I sowed seed? Now, let's, let's take this in context. Uh, whatever better is to you, you must sow into it whatever better is because if you don't sow into it you can't have you can't harvest it the rain will come and you'll just get wet because there aren't enough seeds to draw harvest listen to me everything when it comes to sowing seed god doesn't mention so much the seed as he does the rain because god is mentioning what you can't do are you hearing me He's talking to you about what you can't do. You can't make it rain up in here. I don't care what you said you could do in the club. You can't make it rain up in here. No, your job is to do the sowing. God's going to send the rain. Are you ready for the rain? See, 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 better costs a lot. You just don't get better by just walking up on better. Better costs a lot because we don't have the patience to wait on harvest. We want everything and we want it when. Now, God is talking to an agricultural society that understands that it's going to take some time. That plowing is going to take some time. That fertilizing the soil is going to take some time. Time. That sowing seed is going to take some time and some sweat and some work and some sacrifice. Come on, look at your neighbor and say sacrifice. So it's better for you, uh, for you is a better marriage. That means you're going to have to give something that doesn't immediately give return back to you. So that means you got to sow into something that looks like it's not working. It's going to take some time for you to reap. So you're going to have to sow what? Sacrifice. Sowing is about sacrifice. Not coming off a honey bun for a week. You've been eating bad for 23 years and you're going to eat good for seven days? Now you stand in front of the mirror, mirror and look and say, this ain't working. But that's the way we're about most things. We want to do right for a minute, and then we want to reap a huge return on right that we have not invested enough time for it to work. The gestation of a seed varies from plant to plant. Some things grow quicker than others. In the natural, when you start talking about the gestation of a seed in a woman's body, she can't get pregnant tonight and give birth tomorrow. In fact, it's dangerous to give birth prematurely. There's going to be a sacrificial period, throwing up. You got to get nauseated, swollen ankles, all kinds. I'm trying to remember what happened, Pastor Virginia. All kinds of changes. Half with one falls out, half with another one grows. There's a period of sacrifice. For the human birth takes nine months. For different seeds, it's going to be varied among months. When you want certain things to happen, it's going to be a longer period of time. Raising children is sowing seeds. You may now, you may sow for 20 years and not see anything. But you're sowing seeds. But eventually you're going to see a house because what you put in them will not return unto you void. It will eventually show up some at 20, some at 25, some at 33, some at 40. But eventually, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he 
also reap. You can't wait until you get old and start thinking about putting back for retirement. So all of you people that are in your 30s right now, you ought to be thinking about thinking in your 60s because you can't wait until you get 56 and say, you know what? I'm going to need to retire, send some retirement money because that's too late. So this text has a long-term component of sacrificial sowing so that when the rain comes, God has something to bless. God will only bless what you do. Psalm 1 is clear about it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scoffer, but his delight shall be in the law of the Lord. And in that law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted uh, by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit and watch this on his own season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he do, whatsoever he doeth, whatsoever he do shall prosper. Come on, say that again. Whatsoever he do shall prosper. Tell your neighbor, say, whatever I do, going to prosper. That means that God cannot prosper what you will not do. We might as well kick March off right now and get, and get it in gear because we're really, we're really sowing into 2024 and 2025. And some of the things that we're sowing, you will not see the benefit in the first year. Listen, to whom much is given, much is going to be required. Y'all walking with me. I want to talk to my big dream people. Where are my big dream people? I want to talk to my big dream people. The ones who used to dream small dreams and now you're dreaming big dreams. And you're wondering why it's not happening quick as your small dream. Big dreams take time. Big dreams take your ability to, 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 to be told no over and over and over and over and over again. And you still keep going after what you want. Are you hearing me? Big dreams take time. Big dreams take focus. Big dreams take sacrifice. Big dreams require that you believe in yourself. Depending on what you're trying to gestate, certain things take longer to birth than other things. And God says, I will send the rain in its season. Wonder why God has you here this morning listening to this message. Maybe there's something that you're digging around and you're dunging around and planting around now that God wants to encourage you. It, it's, it's going to take time, but it's going to happen. It's going to take some time, but it's going to happen. And when you get through doing what you're supposed to do, God say, I'm going to send the rain in this season. God told me to tell you this morning, I've already set my watch to a particular season. And when I give my nod, the clouds are going to gather over your head. And it's going to rain like it has never rained before in your life. Which says to me, I got to hurry up and get my saw broken up and get my seed in the ground. So that when the rain comes, I'm ready to receive what God has for me. I don't have time to be anybody's hater. I got too much work to do. I got to make sure that when it's my season, I'm ready. I ain't got time to be jealous of you. I applaud what God did for you in your life because it's a sign that the rain is coming. The rain is coming. Help me say, the rain is coming. Come on, the rain is coming. The rain is coming. Listen, is your life ready for what you've been praying for? <coughs> Watch out. I'm talking to somebody. I'm getting, I'm getting you ready. Things are about to switch in your life. You've been looking at it from one way, but things are about to switch in your life. You may have to change your circle of friends for what you're praying for because you know you can't bring them crazy crew into your new circle of people you got because they're going to say something stupid and mess up the whole deal. The rain is coming on schedule. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to pray about it. The rain is coming on schedule. There's no doubt about it. Sooner or later, it's going to be raining right on your property. Did you hear? Sooner or later, it's going to be raining right on your property. Say amen, somebody. But if you don't put seed in the ground, you're not ready for what God is about to do in your life. Right. I'm telling you, you can't wait until you get there to get there. Right. Right. You can't wait until you get there to get there. You got to walk like, 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 like what you're not until you become what you walk like. Amen. You got to start getting ready for it before it happens in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Tell your neighbor, say it's coming. It's coming. I'm sowing into my marriage. I'm sowing into my retirement. Or I'm sowing into my peace. Say I'm sowing into my peace. Yeah, I saw you call me, but I didn't answer. Because I'm sowing into my peace. And I know how stressful it is when I get on the phone with you. And it's not that I don't love you. But I didn't answer because I'm sowing into my peace. I'm not ready for this wife because I got to get this job. So that I don't ask her to marry wait. As soon as I get this job ready, I get the, and get this credit ready and, and, and get this house ready. And then I'm going to talk to you because I, now I'm ready for the rain. But, if, but I don't want it to rain and I'm not ready. Are you hearing? Because I have to move in your house or ask you to live with my mama. And even though you're willing to do it, it's going to strain the happiness that we would have had. And it's a sign that I wasn't ready for the rain. Is this real talk or what? I can't hang with eagles if I can't stand heights. So if I'm going to be eagle bound, I've got to overcome my fear of heights. I got to get used to the next level if I'm going to fly up there. Are you hearing me? If I'm going to nest up there, if I'm going to live up there, I, I'm going to have to visit up there. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, visit where you're going. Come on, write your note to self. Come on, write it down. Write a note to self. Visit where you're going. Visit where you're going until it doesn't feel strange. Until it doesn't feel foreign. Until it doesn't feel odd. Until you understand the culture. The truth of the matter is I haven't gotten over Egypt. <laughs> and until I get over Egypt, I'm not ready for the promised land. The wilderness is the place where I detox from who I was so that my proclivities will fall off of me because I'm free, but I'm still thinking like a slave. And it's going to take some time for me to embrace me. Sometimes people are trying to get other people to embrace things that they have not fully accepted themselves. So you need time before the rain. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the rain is coming. If I'm going through in my body, I don't want around me, I want to be around sick people. Put me around the healthy people. Are you hearing me? Put me around what I'm trying to be. Not the ones who's telling me, have you tried putting a hot wrap on? <laughs> if you put onions and boil them, put them around your neck, the swelling go down, <laughs> your feet go down. I, w <laughs> I want to go around people who's talking about, let's go see 80 for Brady at 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> or let's go over to the harvest table and sit down and sit down for a while. Then I turn around and say, give me a minute, let me put my shoes on. I want to be around folk where I'm going. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I'm talking to somebody. Prepare yourself. Get yourself together. Get ready because you're coming into a season. Y'all miss me. Y'all good. Get yourself ready because you're coming into a season. Get yourself ready because you're coming into it. Come on, get yourself ready because you're coming into a season. The rain is coming. The rain is coming. I hear it. The rain is coming. The clouds are building. The rain is coming. I want to talk to some people who felt like you had, be, had to be here this morning. You, had, you couldn't miss church. You had to be here. The reason you felt like you had to be here this morning because God had a word for you that the rain is coming. The rain is coming. You don't have time to worry about what they're saying about you on your blog site or in your inbox. The rain is coming. Those gossipers don't have nothing to do, but I got to get ready and get this ground ready and get this seed in the ground because the rain is coming. Rain is coming. The best response to criticism is success. Are you hearing me? 
You don't have to tell them anything. Show them everything. You ain't got to tell them. You listen, the rain is coming. My God, who am I preaching to this morning? I wish I had that, 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 that go-to like Ella has where I could just, you know. But my God, who am I preaching to this morning? Tell your neighbor that the rain is coming. I'm planting some things right now that may not come up for five years, that may not come up for eight years, but I'm planting while I'm strong enough. Planting while I'm strong enough so that I can reap them when I need them. Are you hearing me? See, what I'm doing while I'm teaching this is I'm trying to get a mindset in you that's looking forward. Not looking, but looking forward. The problem with most of us is what we're looking, that we're looking backwards. Our entire gaze is in the rearview mirror of regret and neglect and abuse and shame. And you can't get ready for the promised land if you're still grieving over Egypt. But you get to better. You won't get to better looking backwards, but you'll only get better looking forward. God, I feel that I'm speaking to somebody this morning in this room in a very deep way. You cannot get to the promised land saying, I haven't got closure with Pharaoh. Forget closure with Pharaoh. Let him drown in the Red Sea. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Pharaoh, you on your own, bro. I got to go because the rain is coming in my life. The, 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 the text said, if you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in its season and the ground will yield its crops and the trees their fruit. Your threshing will continue until great, wait a minute, your threshing, threshing means you're harvesting wheat. It means you're harvesting wheat. Listen, it says your threshing will continue until the grape season. See, this is strategic sowing. This is, this is not just sowing. This is strategic sowing. Are you hearing me? You got to understand that there's a cycle that's already started. He said your harvesting wheat will continue until the grape harvest and the grape harvest will continue until you're planting the wheat and you will eat all of your food. Listen, God wants you to have overflow. Y'all want to. He wants you to have an overflow. And he said you eat all the food that you want to eat. Listen, listen, I, some of you have been hungry and you lived in your car and you didn't have enough to give the kids to go into school. But God told me to tell you, you just entered into a new zone. You just shifted into a new era. He said you're going to be able to eat all that you want to eat. Are you hearing me? And live in safety. What good is rich if you're not safe? What good is healthy if you're not safe? But the Lord told me to tell you, so you shall live in safety. But you're going to have to begin to sow everything. You got to sow wheat and tomatoes and collards and black eyed peas and green beans. You got to sow. And you got to sow everything, and it's going to require. It ain't going to happen, but it's going to require sacrifice, and it's going to require work. Say work. Ah. And what he's trying to tell you, something's about to happen. Before you get one thing in, here comes something else. I will grant peace in the land. And you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. Are you hearing me? He says, you'll be able to lie down and I will not. Listen, this country is safe because you're here. We got military base that's cyber and we got a bomb plant to our east. But everything is safe because you're here. Are you hearing me? I will grant you peace in the land and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. I will remove wild beasts from the land and the sword. Watch this. 
everything, anything too big for you to fight. God told me to tell you, I'm going to move it out of your way. Some of you got these jobs and your supervisor is always on you. God says, don't worry about it. I'm getting ready to move them out of your way. That person who's been keeping you from getting your raise. Y'all ain't listening to me. Anything that's a beast that's bigger than you, God told me to tell you he's moving it out of your territory. He says he's going to take it out of your territory from your land. And the sword will not pass through your country because of you. Are you hearing me? Come on, tell your neighbor, say, Lord, let me live in safety. Are you hearing me? Free from anxiety, free from everything else. See, the unseen is working. Listen, you will pursue your enemies and they will fall by the sword before you. Because my favor, you're going to be able to do more with less. Five of you will chase a hundred. And a hundred of you will chase 10,000. And your enemies will fall by the sword. He says, you're going to be able to do more with that. Folk that are working on your job are going to wonder where you, how you live, where you live. How you drive, where you drive. Folk going to say, you must be selling drugs, Harrison. Because you're not supposed to be able to drive the kind of vehicle you drive. But you'll be able to do more with, with less. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred will chase ten thousand, and your enemies will fall by the sword. Even when the odds are stacked against you, you're still going to win. I'm getting ready to leave here. I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful. And watch this. I will increase your numbers, and I will keep my covenant. Are you hearing me? You will still be eating. This is what got me right here to the, the topic that we have. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you're going to have to move it. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. It went right over your head. You weren't expecting the rain. Listen what he said. He says, you will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. Look at your life right now. Just today, look at your life. You are still being blessed from what you sold last year. You'll still be eating last year's harvest when you have to move it out of the way and make room for the new. And then he says, I will put my dwelling place among you and I will not Abhor. That word abhor means God says I'm going to do it and it ain't going to cost you nothing. But just give me the praise. Are you hearing me? All you got to do is give him the praise. Tell the world who did it. Here's what your problem is going to be. Your problem is going to be where am I going to put this new harvest? That's going to be your problem. See, God's going to open the windows of heaven and he's going to pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. You eating today from the decisions you made last year. Are you hearing me? Y'all get ready. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. This is 2020. Your best day is coming. <laughs> Y'all should have saw Patrick Gina pull her ear. She was trying to pull my coat. She was telling me, close it down. She said, she's doing all kinds of stuff because she thought y'all was getting tired. Y'all getting tired? <laughs> Just shop better. I don't have no more notes, so I'm at the end of that anyway. Say praise the, praise the Lord. Listen, I just I, I, I spent time this week and the week before. I even told, I think I did I tell you what my time was gonna be? At work. Because see, to me it was it was doing something in me, so I start writing. And I start writing for you. Because I saw everybody in our congregation and some of the things that they were going through and some of the things they had been going through in their past life. God told me to tell you this morning. That was training ground for you. That was training ground for you that you will be able to now help someone else because you're moving to what? Better. 
you're moving to better. You can't help me if you don't have money. If I need money. But because you hear this word and you're shifting, you're moving to better. He said, I've already put in you what you need. Deuteronomy says, I've given you the ability to obtain what? He didn't say money. God is not interested in you just having money. Money is included in the package. But God says wealth. Because wealth is your what? I like that, your birthright. Come on, lift your hand and give God praise right where you stand. <laughs>